You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own miniature Tesla coil. All right, so before we begin, let's understand how this circuit works. First off, this circuit is known as the Slayer Exciter circuit. The guy who designed this circuit originally will be linked below in the video description. So with this circuit, we use a 9 volt battery. When current is applied to the base of a transistor, it allows current to flow from the collector to the emitter. So right when you flip on the circuit, electrical current will flow through this resistor into the base and down over here, completing this loop. When that happens, it allows electrical current to flow over here and go through the gate this way, since applying that current to the base of the transistor will open it up. And as I've shown in previous videos, when electrical current is flowing through a wire or a coil, it produces a magnetic field. That magnetic field will produce a current inside this coil. And because of the ratio, it'll be a higher voltage. When that current flows back down and through here, it's going to go across this LED back to the negative of the battery. You may notice that the LED is put in backwards, but since that voltage over here is high enough, it'll be able to flow backwards through the LED. Since electricity will take the easiest path possible, the electricity will also, instead of going through here, will shortcut its way through the LED along with that voltage going through, thus going back. When this happens, current can't flow through here since no current's going through the base, so it'll shut off this. When that magnetic field collapses, this one will also collapse. And when this one collapses, it can no longer go through that LED. So instead, it will go back to the beginning, going through the base of the transistor. This produces the high frequency oscillation that we need for the effects that are witnessed from this layer exciter circuit. So the first thing we're going to do is create this secondary coil here. Although you can make it an air coil, basically meaning there's not an iron core, for this specific arrangement, I'm going to be using a ferrite core from an inductor like this. So now, since I want that iron core, I'm going to go ahead and peel away this wrapping that's around it. And then once you get into it, peel away all the wire. Try saving this copper wire because it's going to be useful for projects in the future. Now that I have all that wire unwound, I'm going to take some electrical tape and place it around the ferrite core. This is helped to prevent it possibly arcing to the core itself. Now I'm not using the wire that was already on this to do the 275 windings because it's a little bit too thick. So instead, if you look inside of a relay, there's very thin magnet wire wrapped around the solenoid here. So take apart the relay and use that as the wire. As you can see, I have successfully removed that coil. Now I'm going to carefully wind about 275 turns of this thin copper wire around this ferrite core here. And this will give us our secondary coil. Admittedly, that took a very long time to wind up, especially because I kept on dropping it and it would unwind. Anyways, now that we have that part done, carefully hold your position so that it doesn't unwind and place some tape on it like this so that it will stay wound up. And go ahead and give it a nice wrap. And there we go, that's our secondary coil right there. For my transistor, I'm going to be using this one. It is a BD-135 transistor that I salvaged out of an old TV. By Googling the part number on my phone, I can see that it goes emitter collector base. Going back to the circuit, this is our base, that's our collector, and this is our emitter. So now I'm going to insert the transistor into these pins here. Now I couldn't find a perfect 22,000 ohm resistor, but you can see by combining these four resistors together in series, I get around 22,000 ohms. From what I understand, this should be close enough for the circuit to work fine. Now I'm going to take that resistor and insert it between the base and the positive rail. Now as you can see, we also need a primary coil on this with about three turns. To get that, I'm just going to take my secondary coil here and wind this wire around it three times. And to hold that primary winding in place, I'm just going to take a little bit of tape and wrap it around this. And there we go. So now I'm going to take one end of that primary winding and attach it to the positive rail over here. And the other end is going to go to the collector of the transistor, which in my case is the center pin. Now I'm going to take a wire and connect it from the emitter of the transistor over here to the negative rail. Now we're going to take an LED. You can see that one leg is longer than the other. This leg is going to be the positive side. This leg is going to be the negative side. As you can see on our circuit, we have the positive side of the LED on the negative side of the battery and the negative side of the LED on the positive side. So I'm going to insert the positive side into the negative rail and the other side over here. Then I'm going to take a jumper wire to connect the negative side of the LED to the base of the transistor right over here. Now I soldered this wire onto one of the ends of my secondary coil. And I'm going to insert it right here, connecting it to the base of the transistor as well. So now that everything is completely breadboarded out, let's go ahead and turn on the power. If this light turns on, that means everything should be working. If the light does not turn on, then switch the two connections for your primary coil, and that should solve the problem. So let's go ahead and crank up my power supply to 9 volts. As you can see, when we bring a fluorescent light near the coil, the tube lights up. This is because of the high frequency resonating from the magnetic field. Anyways, now that we know everything all works, I'm going to go ahead and solder it onto a project board so that it will be a little bit more of a permanent look. All right, I finished now and here it is. As you can see, this is the terminal for the nine volt battery and all the other components are just the same, except from the open end of the secondary coil, I attached this long piece of metal here. I did this so that it could act like an antenna to light up lights very easily just by bringing it near that piece of metal. So now that I have it all turned on, you can see that little yellow light light up. And by taking a fluorescent tube, when I bring it near it, it'll light up just like that. 
I definitely do think this is a very cool project that you could carry around practically in your pocket, only I would not carry this in my pocket because it's pretty delicate to be honest. And you could bring it around to show some of your friends. You could also use a small neon bulb or a compact fluorescent light bulb to get this same effect. You can also use a coil of copper wire with an LED attached on the end. And as you can see, when I bring the coil with the LED near the antenna, the LED will light up. So now you know how you can build your very own Slayer Exciter mini Tesla coil. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see our weekly videos just like this one, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. And if you have something you'd like to see in a future video, leave that in the comment section below. Please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own Jacob's Ladder.